Um, all right, so we have a form here, and we're going to uh, see if we can programmatically manipulate this uh, content. And we're going to be doing that in a JavaScript file. It's of the same name, but it's the same feature. Uh, so that we could call the same thing user admin that um, component, or it could be a controller. Right? This is on a client, and it's a JavaScript. Right. So this is going to um, it's going to be a we're going to be using the best practice of uh, putting all our code inside of a of a an iffy expression, right? So that we're not littering the namespace because we're competing with a whole bunch of other libraries, right? We're competing uh, with um, with jQuery library. We're competing uh, maybe with uh, other um, you know uh, other other JavaScript files. So we don't want to compete with all this other stuff, right? So we're going to put everything in there, and I think we already linked it. Yeah, we already linked in there. Excellent. Um, all right, so just to make sure that uh, this is loading, we're going to alert. Uh, hello, world. OK, so let's uh, let's load our user admin. It says, hello, world. So we know that that JavaScript is loading. Very good. Um, so in here. Uh, we uh, we want to, for instance, um, grab these input fields right, so we can control them from from uh, JavaScript. Uh, grab these buttons over here. Maybe grab the the, the template here because we're going to copy and paste it over and over, right? Um, so so let's uh, let's uh, let's let's first start with uh, something simple, right? Maybe um, maybe iterating over a collection. Of users, right, and dynamically rendering them here uh, dynamically. Okay, uh, okay. So let's do that. Let's say say we declare an array of users, right? So constant uh, users might be an array of objects, and this might be a, a user whose ID is one two three and has a username um, Alice and has a, a first name Alice. Oops, first name Alice. All right, so let's keep it simple. Let's just uh, create a couple, a few of these. Oops, uh -oh. copy, paste, there we go. And let's create a few users here. And this might be Bob, uh, this might be Charlie, and this might be Dan. And this might be Bob, and this Charlie, and this is Dan. Okay, excellent. Uh, and uh, and now uh, say that that's a constant. We'd like to be able to iterate over this, and and then and then grab right from the HTML. We like to grab this this row here, right? This template row. Where is it? Yeah, there's a there's this template row here. I like to be able to copy and paste it multiple times inside of this t-body just append it at the bottom right for every single user that we have in some in some data set right uh, so let's see how we can do that right. uh, basically what we'd like to be able to do is uh, is uh, go into into this t-body look for a table row right who's that has this class uh, this class right and then clone it and then paste it and append it at the bottom of the t-body you know, for every single element in that in that collection in, the, in that array. All right, so let's let's see how we can do that. Uh, well, jQuery does allows us to do just that. Notice that uh, we have loaded jQuery from the from here the library. Where is it? There it is. Right, we're loading uh, uh, jQuery three point three point one, and jQuery allows us to dynamically uh, uh, manipulate this uh, this DOM right the document object model. All right, so uh, jQuery, what it does is when it loads, the only thing that it does is that it, it creates the following function, jQuery. It's globally available, right? and, um, and this function is a very powerful function. One of the things that you can pass this function is a CSS styling uh, expression. Right? Now, you might say, well, why CSS? What, would you, what does jQuery want with CSS? Well, if you remember, if you look, go back to our CSS, what is it? What what is CSS doing here? 
notice that what it's doing is that it's referring to something in the document, right? Notice that, remember that there was, there was a table row that has that particular class? It's, so it's able to refer to certain locations in the document and then apply some kind of transformation. That's what CSS does. But this is very important, this, right? It's referred to, is, is called the, um, it's called a selector. It allows us to select elements in the original document. So, so what, um, so we would like to do something similar. We would like to go into the HTML and refer, right, reference this template right here. Right? So that's exactly what we're going to do in our, in jQuery. We're going to pass, I'm going to, it says, go fetch me an element, right, whose class is web dev template. Go fetch it for me. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is that we're going to just copy it over into this local constant and we'll call this the uh, row template. Okay, there we go. All right, so we went to fetch it. Now we have a reference to that to that row there. Right? And ideally, what we'd like to be able to do is just clone this template for every single object that we have in this array. Right? Okay. Um, all right. So excellent. So let's do that. Let's. Um, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna iterate over the array. We're gonna say four. Say for um, a var u and users. Okay, uh, we're going to retrieve every single user, so we're going to say constant user. It's going to be user sub u. And now that we have the the, the user, what we'd like to be able to do is is clone every, every uh, uh, this row template right, for every single object that we have here. So let's do that. Let's say um, const uh, row clone is going to be the original row template cloned. Right? Now this clone function, right, that clone function was added by jQuery. jQuery is powerful. It adds all these nifty little cool uh, APIs on, on, on raw uh, uh, HTML uh, DOM elements. Right? It adds all these great APIs so that allows us to clone it, remove it, uh, just move it around the page, put put it somewhere else, make it draggable, make it droppable, make it sortable. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's really cool. All right, so now that we have this clone, right? We have this clone. What we'd like to be able to do is what what do we what do we do with that clone? What we need to do is append it to the body, right? Uh, append it at the bottom of the body over here. Okay. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, again, we need to just like we reference this this um, this template. We need to reference the body. We can either reference it by the name of the field of this of this element, or by this class. Right now, if there, if you had many bodies, t bodies, then maybe we would use the class or an ID. Uh, since we know it's the only body here, right? We can just say t body, and we're done. Or we can do it by class. It's your choice. You can use either one. Uh, so we need. To grab the the body, right? So const t body, we can grab it. We can say jQuery, and again say t body. Now we have the t body. Uh, so uh, we can now now use the t body, and we can append this cloned row. We can append it to the t body, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to say append row clone. There we go. Um, all right, so let's see what uh, what we have so far. If we go here and refresh the page, notice that it's not showing anything. But is there really nothing there? Uh, let's look at the the DOM here. Uh, so we just have that T row. There really isn't anything. <laughs> uh, perhaps we we missed something here. Refuse to apply style. Uh, the JavaScript is is a uh, Complaining, what's it saying there? Either. Uh, yeah, it's trying to retrieve the user service. Okay, we don't have that yet. Uh, so we know that's not it. Uh, that's not the problem. And the element looks like they're, they're not being added. We still have just the one single table. That's fine. We can, we can still step, step through it, and that's something we need to learn, right? We need to learn how to step through the code and debug what's, what might be going wrong. Uh, let's open this. Uh, here's admin, here's our JavaScript, and we can step through this and see what we've, we've got.
All right, so let's uh, put a breakpoint here and let's refresh. Uh, let's hover over row template. Notice that it says length zero, meaning it did not find that element that has that class and it did not find the T body. How is that possible? We just looked at it, the HTML, it's actually there. That's fine, that's actually a very common uh, uh, issue. Uh, if you notice that the our sorry our uh, our HTML notice where our code is our code is at the beginning here is this head here right there it is uh, up here there's a component that JavaScript whereas the content that we're looking for the T body is way down here meaning by the time we parse and we execute this JavaScript we haven't yet uh, parsed or or generated this T body in the do in the domain object right in the domain object model you know this TR doesn't exist yet that's why it doesn't find it that's very very common let's fix that now, let me close that we don't need this need that uh, that probably that one we don't need that one we don't need excellent all right so let's go back uh, to the JavaScript what we need to do is, is um, as I mentioned, as I we mentioned earlier, um, yeah, we need to wait for the document to load. Right? We have two ways to fix it. We can either be lazy about this and just just move our JavaScript to the bottom of the document. Right? So let's do that. We can put it at the bottom of the document just to show you. We'll put it uh, right here, right under the bot, right before the body. Right? So if we refresh this. Okay, and put the breakpoint. Right, we hover over it. Notice that this time around is not zero. See that? There's at least one element that has that class. What about the T body? Yeah, there it is. There's at least one that has that body. So we did find it. If we continue, we continue. It's going to iterate over each one of the rows. Let's remove this. Let's go. It's done. Notice that it's not rendering, but it's not rendering because if we go to the elements, uh, you'll notice now that we have that many rows. See that? T row, T row, T row, T row, T row. So they have, they have been added, added to, the, to, the, to the domain, but they all have this display none because we're copying a, an element that was already displayed none. Yes? Uh, so basically what we need to do is that before appending it, we would need to remove this class, right, so that it does show. All right, so let's let's go back and, and do that. Uh, so we've cloned it. Um, once we clone it, we can say remove class, remove class, and say remove class. The what was it? Um, web dev uh, hidden was it? I forget. Hidden. Yeah, web dev hidden. Let's grab that. There we go. Web dev hidden. Remove that class. So if we refresh this page, refresh, notice that indeed now we have those clones, right, with some dummy data. We have some dummy data, the dummy data that was already there. Right, but notice that we've, we were able to manipulate the DOM programmatically. Make sense? All right, so let's move on and make this uh, a little more interesting. Actually, no, before, um, we, 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 we might want to, uh, uh, you know, put it back in the at the top of the header. Uh, let's 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 look at that. 